We can't embrace the losing formula that says only tax cuts will work for every problem we face, that ignores critical challenges like our addiction to foreign oil, or the soaring costs of health care, or falling schools and crumbling bridges and roads and levees. I don't care whether you're driving a hybrid or an SUV. If you're headed for a cliff, you've got to change direction. The president speaking in Williamsburg, Virginia tonight, speaking to assembled Democrats there, sort of hitting the nail on the head about the whole problem with the ongoing stimulus debate in Washington. Uh, let me elaborate on that by getting really simple here for a second. The economy is in crisis because people aren't buying enough stuff. There's supply, right? People make stuff that is to be sold, and then there's demand. Demand is buying. Right now, there's not enough buying. So what they teach you in the very easiest semester of the very easiest economics class, because it's really easy to understand, even if you're a total dunderhead about more complicated macroeconomic stuff, what they teach you is that the government can turn around an economic crisis that's caused by not enough demand by making demand. Stimulating demand, they call it. Economic stimulus. On the continuum between rocket science and duh, understanding the concept of economic stimulus is closer to duh. It is not the most complicated policy idea. If no one else has anything to spend and the economy is collapsing because of it, the government should spend and it should try to spend in a way that gets everybody else spending too. That, that, that's the whole kit and caboodle. That's the whole idea. Last night, 90% of Senate Republicans voted for something they called an economic stimulus that had zero government spending in it. That's like calling a rack of lamb a fruit cocktail. That's a big, neat tax cut bill, you guys. But how about we get back to the idea of economic stimulus? You know, to save ourselves from having to eat cat food while we live in our cars for the rest of our lives? It is reality check time here. Economic stimulus, most efficiently, is government spending. The most purely stimulative spending would probably be just to give envelopes full of cash to the poorest people in the country. Statistically, they'd be the most likely to spend it. In the absence of a political reality that would make something like that possible, an almost ideal strategy is government spending, say, on infrastructure, of which the American Society of Civil Engineers just said we could use $2.2 trillion worth. It's good jobs that can't be outsourced immediately, that have the long-term benefit of dragging our country into the 21st century in terms of our ability to compete economically with the rest of the world. As I said, duh, not complicated. Ask your friendly neighborhood governors. They will tell you. Joining us now is Democratic Pennsylvania Governor Ed Rendell. Governor Rendell, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Well, that was brilliant, Rachel. It reminds me of the old... Uh uh, saying kiss, keep it simple, stupid. And, and that's what this is all about. No question about it. Well, do you think that Pennsylvania is going to end up getting the federal help that it needs from this stimulus? Are you optimistic? Well, first, I, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more in infrastructure spending, because you're right. That's not only the one that employs people the fastest, but it puts money into the economy, money going to steel factories, concrete, asphalt, lumber, f factories that employ working Americans. That would have been the best way. And there's $100 billion of stimulus, of the infrastructure in the stimulus. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more for roads and highways and mass transit. But it was a good, excellent start. And what bugs me, and I think bugs all of my fellow governors, Governor Christ of Florida, Governor Schwarzenegger, good Republican governors, is this obsession about keeping the spend down. When, in fact, economists, including Martin Felstein, have said we've got to spend a lot of money to influence the economy because we have such a, a significant GDP. We've got to make a dent in it. Today, the Collins Group wants to cut... Ninety billion dollars, and I think I don't mean to 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 be negative, but some of that money should be cut. But a lot of it aid to the states. They say, well, the states don't need this stabilization money. Well, yesterday I delivered my budget speech: a billion dollars in cuts in state programs, two hundred and fifteen million dollars in revenue enhancements, and if they cut the twenty-five billion dollars that's in the stabilization fund, I'll have to make five hundred million dollars more in cuts and that will mean over three or four thousand layoffs in our educational institutions both k through twelve higher ed in our state workforce uh, it'll mean business tax cuts all of the things that they don't want how is it stimulating the economy to force additional layoffs of working people it, the whole thing is backwards we ought to be content 
to spend and spend a significant amount, but spend it on right on the right things like infrastructure. Get rid of the stuff in the original bill that was clearly ridiculous. No question about that. And spend it on things that protect jobs and create jobs. It is as simple as that. On the, in terms of the debate over what is actually in the bill, there are very few Republicans who will say that they think that infrastructure spending is a bad thing. Specifically, they won't criticize that as a type of spending. At least most of them won't. They will, as you say, though, criticize the overall size of the bill or the idea that there has to be spending at all. D do you think that it is the fact that we haven't ended up with enough infrastructure spending, we probably haven't ended up with a good enough bill at all, e even if they had voted on it tonight, is it a product of economic ignorance or is this just being political? Politically outmaneuvered. Yeah, I think when I heard Mr. Boehner say on some TV show about 10 days ago, this is a chance for us as a party to establish our identity, meaning their identity as guardians of the federal, federal treasury, an identity that they did everything opposite of for eight years. But if they want to establish their identity, not now. This nation is in deep, deep trouble. People are hurting at levels that I don't know if these men and women understand. It's no time for politics. It's no time for establishing your identity. It's time to get money into the economy, as you said, and that comes from spending. And it should be spending that has a laudable goal and that also puts people to work. See, I would be much more content if when the Republicans passed their bill, in addition to tax cuts, if they had a big expanded infrastructure program. But, but this is all about ideology. It's all about politics. It's not about getting it right for America. And it makes me angry. Just as a citizen, forget as a governor, it makes me angry. If the Senate comes back to work tomorrow, they're not going to pass anything tonight. If they come back to work tomorrow and it looks like they're politically they're in shambles, they don't have anything to work with, do you think that they ought to just scrap it, start over, say, all right, let's triple what we were talking about for infrastructure, since nobody's arguing against that, start with $300, $300 billion worth of infrastructure, add whatever else we can agree to on top of it till we get to a trillion dollars and start all over, call it a day? Well, uh, if that could be done quickly, the, the problem here is twofold. You're absolutely right. We need to get spending into the economy, but we need to get it into the economy quickly. Yeah. And that's the point that President Obama has made. And it doesn't seem to me that anybody's listening. And, okay, if, if we want to do a better bill, bill, let's take four days off, do a better bill, vote on it next Wednesday, get it to the House, House votes on it, get it to a conference committee, do it before we recess. But... Understand there is a need for speed. This economy gets worse every day. Every day across my desk, another Pennsylvania firm, uh, a hardwood firm with 700 workers, a structurally sound firm, closes down because there are no orders and, and there's no way to get credit. It's got to stop, and it's got to stop soon. Pennsylvania Governor Ed Rendell, thank you, sir. Appreciate your time. Thanks, Rachel.